Hey, what's going on guys? How's everybody doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking the body beat down here on this Thursday afternoon. Uh, one half day left. Tomorrow's a half day and then uh, we're out of school for a couple of weeks. Yes, pretty happy about that. That's always exciting news. Uh, so today I've decided to kind of switch things up. If you recall my video yesterday, I'm sure you all watched it and it might have been another video before that, but um, I said I was probably not going to work out legs two times a week because it's just kind of hard to fit that in there and I'm not working on a leg, you know, squat PR or anything. I'm just trying to get my squats to look better. So I said I was just going to do legs once a week. However, uh, my deadlifts that I did yesterday, I went a little bit above and beyond what I should have done. Uh, I should have stopped at 405 for five reps. Uh, but instead, I went up to 455 for one rep, and it was a hard rep. Uh, my neck is still pulled out from last week from my PR that I got, my 495 PR. And I knew I shouldn't have done it, but I felt good after the 405, and I thought, well, I'll challenge myself and do 455, and uh, we'll call it done there. Well, I shouldn't have done that because it was just a little bit too much weight, and it kind of aggravated my neck again. So I need to make myself, make myself <laughs> not do deadlifts uh, for the rest of this week, which is only tomorrow. I work out Monday through Friday. So <clears throat> no, no, no deadlifts today or tomorrow. I'm gonna instead do squats today and I'm gonna do biceps. And tomorrow I'm gonna do bench press and something else, maybe back or something. So, uh, let's go ahead and get going, guys, because this video is maybe going to be a long video. Remember, barefoot, socks, or some kind of extremely flat-soled shoes. Uh, that's how you want to squat. That's how you want to deadlift. Even doing bent barbell rows and uh, shrugs, anything, uh, anything where you really need to be grounded. Although I technically wear shoes for some of those other lifts, squats and deadlifts, I definitely don't wear shoes unless they're super flat. So anyway, we got 135 here. Uh, my goal today, since I'm kind of strained and if I put too much weight on my neck, it kind of makes me strain. I'm not going to be going up heavy, so I, I don't want to uh, get your hopes up there. But I hope you'll stick around, like, share, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. And enjoy the uh, the workout that we're gonna have anyway. So let's get started here because I'm ready to be done already. 135. Oh, sorry, <laughs> more. So I'm not gonna be doing like multiple camera angles and worrying about showing you my depth and everything. I'm not worried about that in this video. Uh, a lot of times I've been doing like uh, low shots where you can see my depth and I'm getting. Just know that I'm gonna do okay. So squatting like that, nice and low like that, is a struggle for me. I don't have a good, a uh, lot of range of motion in my body. Some guys, you know, you'll see them squat, and it's not a big deal. 
it's down up, down up, down up, no problem. They can sit on the floor and pop back up. Some of us are a little bit slower. We gotta think of every inch that we're moving. And uh, sometimes it's a struggle uh, to keep you know everything in form and in check as best we can. And uh, so sometimes, you know, even five reps can take, you know, too long. So anyway, I'm letting this video play out. I'm not going to be stopping it. Uh, so we'll have some conversation. I got a couple of little topics that I wanted to talk about. One is Facebook. Now, I've had a Facebook account since 2009, and I posted my entire life, pictures, videos, comments, uh, opinions, thoughts. I mean, everything you can imagine and think of, relationship stuff, everything in the world you can think of. It's my diary. It's where I dump all my stuff. So, I've been doing that since 2009. But April of 2023 was the last time that I technically posted anything on my wall. Because I got tired of being put in Facebook jail and uh, not being able to have control over my stuff and knowing that all my information and all my stuff is right there at the hands of Facebook and they can do whatever they want. So I kind of stopped posting. I was still posting on groups and pages and different things like that. But uh, I wasn't posting and, and taking my time and effort to share stuff on my Facebook on my wall. Uh, that's my personal stuff and I got to thinking over time like you know they have control over everything I do like they can they can wipe out these these last 15 years of my life like that so but I just started posting on it again yesterday and uh, I'm gonna try and keep myself out of controversy speaking my thoughts and opinions on things uh, I'm gonna try and be a little bit more quiet and just say screw it to all the other stuff and uh, we're gonna see how that goes so there's one topic out of the way Facebook if you want to look me up Michael Thorne M-I-C-H-A-E-L-T-H-O-R-N-E you'll probably see my profile and all that and my banner and all that know it's me I'm the really good-looking guy you'll see that let's do another set of 135 stuff good job uh, so another topic that I wanted to touch on I've seen uh, somebody posted on another channel that I'm subscribe to and they said something they mentioned something about chiropractors and I assume somewhere in the guy's video uh, he mentioned chiropractors I guess um, and somebody mentioned in the comments how they think chiropractors are scams and shams anyway they were talking about how chiropractors were scams and shams and I just commented back that uh, you know as someone who's had a chronic bad back since the age of 25 I can say that chiropractors are absolutely not a scam. Um, now I have a bad back every day, all day long. I mean, right now it's inflamed and feels like it needs to be twisted in half and broken. <clears throat> but then there's days when it's out, like you can't breathe, you can't move, you can't put shoes on, you can't go to the bathroom, you're crying in tears, you, you know, you can't move. I have had umpteen million days 
like that. If you're in that predicament, especially if you go to a chiropractor, even a decent chiropractor, uh, you can crawl into their office and walk out. So, and I've been there and done it many, many times. So, uh, chiropractors are not scams. Are they going to fix what's wrong with my back? Probably not. Maybe if I were to go every day and get a multitude of different adjustments and deep tissue massages and all that kind of stuff, it might have done something. It might could still do something. But do I go there thinking necessarily that they're going to heal my back and I'm going to never have a problem again and that I'm not going to go through my everyday aches and pains? No. But they will take you from being uncomfortable to pretty comfortable. So let's do 225. So I said I wasn't going to go up heavy, but I'm going to go up one more step to 315, but that's where I'm going to stop it. And the reason I'm going up is because that 225 felt really good. Now typically I'll stop at 365. That's usually where I just make myself top, at, top out at. That's where I feel like I am at where I can still get a decent rep and range of motion. So I'm only a few pounds away from that, but 315 is still pretty doable. I will do a video of the 315. Not sure how that'll look, but we'll do a little video of the 315 from the side. Let's go ahead and get at least one decent rep here. Good stuff, that's a good one. Now, if I listen to my crazy side, it says, go ahead and put the 25s on, Mike, and do 365. I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna quiet that side of my brain and I'm gonna do what I wanted to do. We'll go back down to 225. So another topic that I want to touch on is, uh, I guess, my shoulder. And uh, I've had a couple of people ask me about my shoulder over the years and different stuff. And uh, uh, years ago when I worked out, I hurt this shoulder on a friend's bench, bench pressing. And then not too long after that, I hurt this shoulder on another friend's bench, bench pressing. Two benches that I wasn't used to. I kind of went up 300 pounds a little quicker than I should have, I guess. And not knowing the benches and how they, you know, how they felt, 
Uh, I screwed up both my shoulders. So over the years, they've been, you know, bad and hit and miss, and you know, they'd feel okay and not okay, and feel okay and not okay. And uh, basically, I could get over that and move through it. But in 2015, I went to play disc golf, you know, where you throw the disc into the baskets. And instantly, I was ripping my shoulder apart and I kept playing and kept playing and then I'd go back the next day and play and go back again and play and each time I started going eh, you know getting worse and worse and I, I knew I was ripping my arm apart and so eventually I stopped but it was too late uh, so I know I've got a lot of scar tissue in my arm and it affects down into my bicep and my tricep and it's just a hot burning like kind of a pulling off your bone kind of a feel uh, muscle and muscle and whatever kind of feel like it's just ripping and inflamed and very painful and uh, so that kind of goes into uh, you know my workout I have to think about that and I, sometimes it affects me and that's why you don't see me doing any more shoulder presses like I was and because uh, I was going up too heavy and doing stupid things and, uh, and it just it was inflaming and tearing me up way too much and uh, Add on top of that, I've also got golfers and tennis elbow. I don't know. Both of them got a problem. Uh, and my right one, I overextended one time. I was hitting a heavy bag. I'm not a boxer. I was just working out on my heavy bag. Uh, and I was moving around, and I went back too far, and I missed the bag. I threw a hard punch, and I missed the bag. And it, you know, I guess overextended, hyperextended, whatever you want to call it, my elbow. And it hurt. Uh, forever and I was still working construction through all this kind of stuff uh, not the disc golf uh, I've been done with construction since 2008 but I was still working in construction and you know lifting blocks and lumber and building and pulling concrete and everything else and uh, so it, it just it stayed aggravated and boogered up a lot uh, all the time so it it's pretty good I don't have that pain in it anymore but I don't know if it's helped to create maybe golfers and tennis elbow kind of stuff. So I got that that I got a problem with. Let me go ahead and do this here and then we'll talk about something else. Uh, more things that happen. So back down to 225. pretty good. So we got five. Oh heck I got one more set. Dang it. I got one more set. Ugh, I don't want to do one more set. But I will. I don't want to wuss out. So you want to talk about injuries and stuff uh, to add on top of my shoulders. Uh, I've also, uh, during con my construction years, we were building my, then at the time, my brother-in-law and my sister's house. Uh, they were building their first house. And of course we were inside, we had, we were in the process of doing the drywall and finishing and all that good stuff. And it was cold out but we kept one of the four by eight sheets out of the floor so we could come in and up out of the floor and under the house and work and do stuff with ease. So I was under the house doing something, probably, I think I was 
uh, doing some choice hangers or something like that or something like that yeah and uh, I was coming up out of the out of the floor like so I was like this I was coming up like this the floor is like I guess probably right here or so and my brother-in-law was doing some drywall was uh, doing some mudding uh, on some drywall and he was I think standing on a ladder partly and standing on the drywall partly well the drywall fell over on my head so I had 12 sheets no the floor was about right here because it fell completely like all the way a full a full drop there was 12 sheets of drywall leaning against the wall half inch thick four foot by 12 foot drywall 12 pieces fell over on my head hit me right in my forehead I had a big old lump right there there was a dent in the drywall where it hit my head we hung that piece in their master bathroom above the shower uh, I could go find it today <laughs> uh, so I had that happen uh, way back then and that should have probably killed me uh, you know you got I don't know if you know but drywall is pretty heavy and especially 12 foot long this one your standard 8 foot this is a 12 foot long drywall and that whole stack boom, fell over and hit me right smack dab on the forehead and I was I was seeing stars I kept working like an idiot I kept working but I didn't want to you know I didn't want to complain and go home and all that stuff but uh eventually just a little while later I saw I got I gotta go I couldn't even I couldn't even keep my eyes open I was just really really in pain so and I ended up going to the ER and I had a concussion whiplash pulled muscles and they said whatever else <laughs> so I was I, I don't know how I didn't die having that much weight come down and hit me on the head and, and it didn't snap my neck or something so I know some of you'll say Jesus was there but I think it just said I got that hard head so uh, anyway so I've got that that I know has played a part and partly in my neck problems and my back problems I'm pretty sure and uh, somewhere around when I was 25 years old or so is whenever I hurt my back uh, I was either 25 or I was I was either 25 turning 26 or I was 26 and I'm gonna turn 27 whichever year it was is 25 26 so uh, you can figure out the, the year that was I'm 52 now my birthday is November 30th uh, so that's when I hurt my back and the only thing I can trip you know go back to and think of that did my back was pulling concrete and it could have been anything I have no idea but that's just what I traced it back to and uh, that's when my life changed is when I hurt my back um, years later into my adulthood into my 40s late 40s is whenever I figured that probably when I hurt my back is when my depression set in that's when it actually started so uh, you know I've had a lot of injuries had on top of those things in 1999 I had a motorcycle wreck uh, me and a buddy were on our motorcycles he was on a faster sport bike crotch rocket and I was on kind of a baby one a 500 Suzuki something I don't know what it was but uh, it was a decent little bike for what it was but we were side by side and running going down the highway and uh, we were playing around and doing this number by each other and acting stupid like you shouldn't do and I was looking over at him like an idiot and, I, and we were coming up over a hill and I was doing 75 miles an hour like an idiot and uh, as soon as I turned around there was a car stopping right in front of me he was turning up to go into a driveway I slammed on my brakes I fishtailed I I don't know how to do it I fishtailed I hit the car kind of at an angle like so I went down the car like so and I went over the hood and my bike went over in the driveway 
Uh, and the driveway was gravel, really hard, wonderful gravel. Ripped my clothes up nice and good. And I was I was bruised and beaten a little bit. And uh, that should have killed me, probably. You know, by the time I hit the car, I was probably still going 40. You know, that's my guess. That's what I've always said, that I probably was still going around 40 when I hit that car. And I can still see it to this day, and that's been a lot of years ago. I can still see it. I see the boy looking at me at his window. It was graduation, high school graduation night, and he was graduating. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and I, I plowed right into his car. Barely did any damage to it, somehow. Only did $30 worth of damage to my bike, somehow. But, uh, yeah, you know, there's been a couple instances where... I should have been dead, but a lot of this probably has something to do with why I hurt. You know, a lot of these things are why I am how I am now. So, and I don't know why I said probably. It's definitely reasons why I have problems now. On top of that, I've twisted and sprung my ankles a multitude of times from the very minute to where my leg was about that big. <laughs> and my wife and everybody was just like, you know, holy crap, you know. Really, my legs, my feet should be broken off. Anyway, let's get another set. Two And like I mentioned a couple days ago when I was talking about my hip, I'll throw that in here too. I was riding my bicycle and it had rained. The, the, the roads were glazed over with some, you know, they were moist. They weren't wet really, they were moist. But, you know, pavement gets slick. So I was coming down a hill on mineral wells here in my town. Come down the hill and I was going to turn at a traffic light and uh, it was green and all that at the time so I was just turning and I went and just slid out and boom landed directly on my hip area and somehow I got a perfectly round like scrape mark like on I think this leg I don't remember but that's where I hurt this hip and this hip was an excruciating type of pain for a good year. I'm talking about the kind of pain where you just barely even twitch like that. <sighs> yeah, and I know it looks crazy doing it, but I mean, it's that, <sighs> oh God, <gasps> I mean, that horrible pain like that. Like, I mean, just stabbed in between, you know, stabbed wherever, you know, in between your leg or something like super, super bad. And there's no reason to go to doctors and stuff. You're just gonna rack up bills and they're gonna tell you, well, just take it easy. So you never go to doctors over this stuff. But anyway, so I still deal with that periodically. It flares up periodically. In the last couple of weeks, it flared up. It's easing up. I noticed today it's easing up. And I think I noticed yesterday it might've been uh, easing up, but it's finally easing up a little bit. And uh, so that's good. And then I did, I got the exact same injury pain in this hip. I was sitting on top of our kitchen counter and I put, let me lean against this so I can balance. And I put this foot up on this leg and I pushed down uh, on my knee just to kind of, you know, I was just stretching. I thought, well, I'll do some stretches while I'm cooking. Boom, instantly, holy crap. <laughs> so I dealt with the exact same kind of stabbing pain 
and this hip, except it went away in about a month or so. Uh, this one lasted for over a year and plus still flares up. This one's pretty much gone. But exact same kind of exact pain. Uh, my wrists, of course, have like uh, arthritis, carpal tunnel-ish kind of stuff going on. I'm just kind of going over all these because sometimes you get asked these questions, what's wrong, and you know. Uh, but here's, here's something you need to think about. None of these injuries were caused by deadlifts, by squats, by curls, by tricep workout, back workouts, none of that. It was not caused by any of that. What caused it was a bench press and doing something stupid uh, without proper warming up and thinking of what I'm doing and just running in there and popping some 300 pounds. That's what happened. So bench press is dangerous. A lot of people like to look at other movements like squats and deadlifts as dangerous. They're not dangerous. Bench press is dangerous. So that's why you see a lot of people, doctors and you know, uh, sports and you know, doctors and stuff like that saying, just use dumbbells, use dumbbells. Well, you can get hurt with dumbbells too. You can come out here and go too far and dumbbells can rip you apart. So it's six in one hand, half a dozen in the, in, the, in the other. So anyway, we got five of those. Let's get these taken off. If deadlifts and squats were the culprit of hurting a back, I would not be able to do them. Your form and technique and taking your time doing those movements will save you. And if anything, they've strengthened my body. Sure, my back is still aching and pains and can throw out like that and it's out every day. You know, with its normal pain that's nauseating. Sure, but I know there has to be no doubt about it that my core is strong with all that I do. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> no, really, it could go that quick. <laughs> But one thing a deadlift will hurt is my neck. <laughs> but it, like I've said before, it, it's done the same thing when I've done really heavy shoulder presses. It's because I'm straining so much that it pulls the muscle in my neck. And it's the same thing whenever I pull that heavy weight, you know, all that weight's pulling you down and it's pulling all this pretty hard. You know, and no matter how much you try to do this, you know, you're not gonna hardly pull up 500 pounds. So, or a normal person, I'm normal, so. I'm not normal, but you know what I mean. So, let's see what else we got to talk about, guys. Uh, Facebook, deadlifts, chiropractor. I don't know, I think we're touching on just about most of what I want to talk about, just kind of chit chat. Oh, and if you watch my videos from this week, you know I had an incident that happened Monday afternoon on my bus route where a kid almost got flattened by an uh, 18-wheeler who was following too close to me. And when I stopped, he wasn't paying attention and came on the right side of my bus where the door is. In the uh, emergency lane, the shoulder, and stopped his grill right at my door as the boy was about to do this. And I screamed so loud, I mean, that boy stopped in his tracks like that because, you know, they're not used to me being that loud. But I had that happen Monday afternoon, and uh, I'll say 24 hours, I was traumatized for 24 hours. It don't take, it, it, don't ta it takes a little bit to get me kind of riled up like that, but uh, for a solid 24 hours, I was just... It was all going through my mind of what if and almost and oh my God and this, that, and the other. And, and I posted it on a Facebook group that I was posting, you know, that a, a local uh, group that we have here in our town where a lot of people are members. And it just so happens this boy's family is on there too. And I didn't bring up his name or anything. I just mentioned the incident. And then they replied back on there, you know, oh my God, you, know, you saved his life. You're a hero. And oh my God, this and oh my God, that. And there's, you know, and, uh, so that's happened to me this week too. And uh, even yesterday, I had two cars go past my, but go past uh, two bus stops. My first bus stop, a car went by. But guess what? You know how stupid people are? 
there was an officer, police officer, right behind me, following me. So he not only passed me, he passed a police officer. So he went by, I'm blowing on my horn like so, and the officer goes around and pulls him over. Now, five seconds later, a quarter mile down the road, bloop, I let another little girl off and somebody blows past my stop. It's every day. You guys need to pay attention and you need to Google rules of the road for bus stops. And uh, they're very simple. Stop. <laughs> so, ah, it's something a little bit on the happier side of news. Um, what am I going to do? Alternate, alternate dumb curls. So, I'm going to do biceps uh, along with this. My videos normally don't take this long, but we're sitting here chit-chatting, and if you watch the whole thing, good. If not, it's all right. Uh, so we're going to do some alternate dumbbell curls. And I'm going to start with 25s. I'm warmed up. I did legs. I'm warmed up. So, some pretty cool good news is, uh, some stuff that I had come in that I had pre-ordered, is ready to be shipped and it got shipped out today. So probably Wednesday of next week I should have a nice little unboxing to do. Uh, some fun stuff that I like to do on my channel. Some of you know what it is. So look forward to that. So let's do some uh, simultaneous uh, dumbbell curls. We got 25s here in hopes that they don't pull my neck. <laughs> so all right. One. One. Two. Two. <laughs> you know, I guess I guess while we're at it, we'll touch on another little topic uh, that gets brought up a lot. Uh, I'm subscribed to a, a couple of channels, and a couple of us out there are over the age of 30. And uh, you know, once you're over the age of 30, you're considered old. You should be sitting down eating Doritos, popping the top, and watching Netflix. Or whatever else people do. That's acceptable for the general public. Uh, th they think you should be doing. Uh, there's a lot of people out there. Number one, a lot of people like to make comments. Uh, towards people that are older, you know, calling you old man, grandpa, and other such things. And man, someone your age of this, and someone your age of that, and you shouldn't be doing this at your age, and you shouldn't be doing that here, or you should, you're doing great at this age, man. I hope I'm that good when I'm your age. Well, you know, a, a whole host of different things that people say. <clears throat> And on top of that, you know, there's a couple of guys out there that make videos and that work out and stuff, and they kind of bring up age sometimes. <sighs> Let me get this set done right here, and then we'll talk about age. One. One. These are 30s. Two. Two. Three. Three. <laughs> Here's the thing with age. Now, keep in mind, I've got a lot of problems from injuries. We, we've touched on that. But a lot of times with age, it's that you let yourself age. At 50 years old, we should still be, if we've lived a decent life and done things right and stayed somewhat active, at 50, you should still be real close to what you were at 20. Close, not perfect, close. At 20, maybe 22, maybe 22. <laughs> At 22, I could jog five miles. Not fast, I wasn't a fast jogger, but I could jog five miles if I wanted to. I have. Now, I might could jog a mile. 
you know? And when I started this journey back again and I started dropping weight, I could jog two miles. But I've put on more weight. So, uh, you should be within a certain percentage if you kept yourself busy and going and active to some degree, you should be close to where you were 20, 30 years ago. There's no reason not to be, unless you've let yourself age. We got the 40s, and it's pulling on my neck. One, one, two, two, three, three. See, you got to think, I had my kids in my early 20s, and I got, you know, I had kids to help keep me busy. I wasn't just a parent that ignored them. We were always outside. We were always playing basketball. We were always throwing the football, the baseball. We were riding bikes. We were going to the park and running around and doing stuff. And I'm talking about up until the age of about... 15, 14, you know, till they get to that age and then, you know, they're kind of doing more of their own stuff. Uh, and plus during that time, from February of 94 until December-ish of 2008, I was doing construction work. So I'm moving all day long and carrying stuff and doing all kind of stuff. <laughs> building homes and buildings and concrete and blocks and everything you can do up and down ladders jumping off of you know jumping off of walls and up a stacks of lumber and so I was always moving now if you have a job where you're just sitting behind a desk or even maybe a, a driver a truck driver or something like that you're at a disadvantage nice easy job as far as you're not really doing a whole lot but you're sitting around and a lot of times you're eating garbage the whole entire time now, I've always been on the Great American Garbage Diet up until the last couple of years. So I know all about it. And I still stayed heavy no matter how busy I was and worked out. So let's grab the 50s. Now, I'll probably just do like two sets of five with these. One. One. Two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. <clears throat> Now I have done sets of 10, no problem, and I could have powered through it, but more so, uh, I don't care so much about moving and getting some a little momentum and moving a little bit. But when I'm starting to struggle, when I'm doing curls, and I'm having to try to stay strict, it tightens up those muscles in my lower back, and I start hurting more in my back than I am my biceps. So, that's why, that's why sometimes you'll see me stop at maybe five or six uh, with, a heavy curl. So me trying to keep everything steady and tight and, and little movement actually hurts. That's why I've told people, technically, humans are like trees, buildings, bridges. We're all designed to move, to move around. When there's stress put on us, we're designed to move. That keeps you from breaking. That keeps you from getting stress fractures. That keeps, uh, that keeps the object healthier and more of a long, uh, longer lifespan. I have no science to back this up. It's just my opinion on it. So we've touched base on a few things from Facebook to all my injuries, I guess that's close to my, all my injuries. I don't have great knees either. So, 
I'm sure there's some place on me that don't hurt too bad. I think my butt's pretty good. I think I've got a pretty strong butt. And uh, Something else I'll touch on. Uh, you'll notice that I'm very much your average everyday dude. Like, when I do these videos, for the most part, you're going to see exactly me. I'm goofy. I'm crazy. I like to cut up. I like to dance. I like to yell and say crazy things and do stuff and that's how I've been my whole life. Not as an adult, but like as a kid. I've got kids from school that'll, I'm sorry, people from school that see me today and they're like, man, you were always the wittiest, funniest, craziest, you know, quickest kind of guy uh, I ever seen. And, uh, you know, they're like, I don't know how you didn't go into Hollywood, into something. Or, <laughs> but I've always been just goofy, funny. I can be very serious, but I can be, you know, myself. So there's a lot of channels out there where you don't get that. It's just a bunch of seriousness or there's no talking, there's no interaction, there's no anything. And sure, people have the attention span of a, you know, lifespan of a common housefly. I get it. But at the same time, it's also nice to connect and get to know people and, uh, you know, connect and get to know people. Let's do another set of the 50s. Let's connect with these 50s. One. One. Two. Two. Three, three, four, four, five, five. A couple little shrugs. We won't write this down in the book. I think I'll go down to the 30s. So we'll go down to the 30s for the last set. Uh, so, you know, uh, I'm looking at my channel. I'm looking at the subscriber count, the, the views, the the interactions that I get and uh, you know YouTube is a is a very finkel bastage it really is uh, you got some people out there that literally do nothing and they make huge channels and then you got some people that bust their butts every day trying to bring something decent and positive and something and uh, they really don't get anywhere. And it was the same way with me on my main channel, Mikey Sun TV. M I K I E S O N TV. Uh, I did everything on that channel. And still, it didn't grow. Didn't grow, didn't grow, didn't grow. Thousand, two thousand videos later, you know, it's barely seen much growth. I upload all these videos over there too. So. Uh, YouTube is just one of those things that you're either going to do it, not get anything out of it and quit, or you're going to do it, not get anything out of it, get something out of it finally, succeed, or you're going to start YouTube, be mediocre, don't get really a huge following, but you just keep chugging along in hopes that you're going to make it one day. And by make it, I don't mean get monetization, monetized. I don't mean that. I mean getting a big, solid, interactive community that people want to take part in and everybody gets something out of. I don't care about monetization. As, as you can tell, I play music in my videos and stuff. I don't care. Uh, 
if I wanted to make money at social media, I would just upload a bunch of, I'd make a channel and have it centered around beautiful girls and stuff like that. And I'd just upload a bunch of beautiful girl clips that you can find all over the internet and use them and draw people in and get a huge following that way. And I'm pretty sure I could do it. And I've thought about doing it like five years ago. And, uh, you know, there's tricks that you can do like that to just blow a channel up and get a big following. But I don't want that. I don't want to be that person. I don't like that kind of content. I don't think that it should be as popular as it is. I think that you should have you should have something good and positive to put out there to the people. And uh, we got enough garbage as it is. So uh, I'm going to keep chugging along and keep making videos. Uh, this again is like my Facebook. Uh, I've really started using YouTube a whole lot. Uh, posting on the community tab ever since I kind of quit using Facebook at the time. Really, and they gave us the option to use the community tab. They gave it all, you know, they gave it to us. Before they didn't. You had to have a certain amount of subscribers, watch time, all that crap. So, let's go down to our 30s. And we'll get a nice little set of some thirties. One. One. Two. Two. <laughs> and uh, for those of you that are in the game, that you're in social media for the monetization to try and make money, that's fine. I'm not saying anything bad about that. It's just, my goal is mostly just to bring good, decent, you know, family friendly ish content to people. Something that might can inspire you, especially if you go to Mikey Sun TV with, you know, book readings I did, just a couple of little short kids books to art projects to projects like this like making an office to cycling photography doing videos you know just showing a host of things you know that I like to do and uh, I think that that's that's where my heart is in my social media uh, and uh I wish more people were that way, you know, where you're, you're just really mainly, you're just concerned about putting yourself out there and just making decent, uh, helpful content and uh, that might can lift someone's day and give them some inspiration to do something themselves. So anyway, guys, that's my workout for today. You've seen, I did legs, I did biceps, pretty good little workout. Uh, happy with my squats, glad I went ahead and went up to 315. I could have done 365, but I held back like I wanted to do. And uh, my, my curls were all good, felt good. So from here, I'm gonna go make myself some dinner. I didn't even get anything started yet because I'm just gonna open some tuna fish and eat some probably tuna out of the can or something. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. But uh, I hope you enjoyed the long-winded video. Um, you know, I can only say like, share, subscribe, comment so many times, but I say it every time. So please, like, share, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff to the body beat down. That's me, Michael, your incredible host on this amazing Thursday that we made it to. Tomorrow's our half day and then we're out for a couple of weeks. I'm ready for that. Hope everybody has a good day. And uh, we'll see you next time on the Body Beat Down. Get up, get out, get rad, do it to it. And I'm sure 99.99999% of you did not make it to this part. See y'all later. Get up, get out, get rad, and do it to it.